Holly Johnson, a History and Archaeology student at Newcastle University, and I'm going to tell you how you can use war memorials to find out information for yourselves about soldiers who died in the First World War. This is the Armstrong Building, the oldest part of Newcastle University, which was originally known as the Armstrong College. It opened in 1906. The war memorial itself was put up in 1923. It records the names of 223 members of staff and students from Armstrong College who died in the First World War. Today we'll be looking at just one individual, A.K. Rob. All we have on the memorial is a name, but behind every name is a story. How do we begin re researching the story of A.K. Rob? The first step is to use the internet. Let's go to the University Library and make a start. The best place to begin this kind of research is the Commonwealth War Graves Commission website, which can be found here. This website is completely free and is very simple to use. It contains basic information about all soldiers, sailors and airmen from Britain and the Commonwealth who died in both the First and Second World Wars. It also tells you where the people are buried. Use the search engine on the homepage, insert the surname and initials of the person you want to look up and specify which war you're interested in. For example, Rob, AK, World War I. This search has given us information we didn't have. For example, Rob's first name, Alexander, and his rank, Major, Regiment, the Durham Light Infantry, and the date of death, the 20th of September 1914. We also see that he was 42 when he died and is buried in the Vondres Cemetery in France. The web search also provides some additional information. In this case, the names of Rob's parents and their address. You can print off all the information that comes up when you search like this. The next step is to use one of the websites which help families to research their own histories. The best known of these websites is Ancestry, available here. Websites like this are very popular, but they're not free. You do need to subscribe to them. If your school does not have a subscription, you can, you can often use Ancestry and similar websites at your local library, Newcastle City Library, for example. Today, I'm going to use Ancestry to find out more about Alexander Robb. These websites contain lots of information about people from the past. Here you can find copies of birth, marriage and death certificates, and also information from the census. The census is a record of all the people living in England, made every 10 years since 1801. The census most important for war memorial research is the one made in 1911, three years before the war. Using the information we found in the Commonwealth War Graves Commission website, we can search for more information on Major Rob. The first thing to do is to put the full name into the search bar. I will then select a family member, his father, using the drop-down menu. I've already found this information from the Commonwealth War Graves Commission's website. Now I'm adding two more family members mentioned, his wife and his mother. This will make my search much more accurate. To improve the search, I'll tick the match all terms exactly box, but it's important to only apply this to the specific person we are researching, AK Rob, otherwise we'll, the search might become too limited. So I'm unticking the other boxes. Okay, let's search. This search takes us to the 1911 census, which provides new information. For example, we now know that Rob was born in India. The census also provides the address of the Rob household and information about all the family members, all of whom will have their own ancestry pages. By looking up each household member, we can see their relationship to Major Rob. We can use all of this information to write a story of the Rob family. In 1911, Rob and his wife Ethel were living in Newcastle with their two children, Sheila and Betty, aged five and three. Ethel's mother, Undine, also lived with them along with several other servants. Obviously, they were quite a well-off family. The next step is to investigate local archives which provide more information, often not available on the internet, about people that we're interested in. In 1912, Alexander Rob became a lecturer in military history at Newcastle University. One of the best sources of information we found concerning Rob is a magazine produced by Armstrong College of Newcastle University. This is not accessible on the internet. To read it, you need to visit the Robinson Library at Newcastle University. Your school can do this as part of your war memorial research. This is the Armstrong College magazine. It's called The Northerner. The December 1914 issue contains the obituary of Rob, who had died three months earlier. Here is a picture of the man himself in his uniform. What does this obituary tell us? Here is an extract. 
Alexander Kirkland Robb, a very gallant gentleman. After leaving here on the 5th of August, and spending about three weeks with his regiment at Cambridge, he embarked with them at Southampton, and proceeded to the front. At the Battle of Aisne he was mortally wounded within a few yards of the German trenches, while leading a counter-attack. He was picked up under fire and carried into the British trenches by two devoted soldiers of his company, one of whom was wounded and the other killed whilst performing this gallant act. He died in hospital, and we are told that he lies in a little churchyard in France. Our deepest sympathy is extended to those left behind, his sorrowing wife and his two little girls. So, using lots of sources, we found out a good deal of information about A.K. Robb. He started off as just a name on a memorial. Now we know all about his life, from his birth in India to his death in France. We've researched more than 100 men on our memorial. You can read their stories here on our Digital Memory Book website. Your school can also visit the Robertson Library and use an interactive version of this resource. There is still a lot of work to do on our memorial. If your school wants to help us, please contact us. You can do a similar bit of detective work on people named on a war memorial near to you. There may even be one in your school. Remember, behind every name there is a story.